Hello to you, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shane. Guess what time it is? Time for us to check out what is happening in the tropics. And we've got some interesting things going on, some things that need to be explained. So let's hop right into it. Of course, we are into the month of September. Typically you think, wow, September? We probably have several tropical systems out there, but we have tropical disturbances, tropical waves, but no name storms, which is kind of unusual for this time of the hurricane season, which typically is the busiest. Now we got off to a fast and furious start, of course, with five name storms, Alberto, Beryl, Chris, Debbie, Ernesto, of course, Beryl becoming the earliest category five hurricane ever in the Atlantic Basin. And of course, it hit us right here in Houston as a category one back on July 8th with 80 mile per hour winds. Of course, we had Debbie and Ernesto as well, category one and two hurricanes that impacted other parts of the country and parts of the Caribbean. And of course, we briefly had Alberto and Chris, two tropical storms, but we've kind of had a lull in the action recently. The last name storm was Ernesto, and that developed back on August 12th, kind of fizzled out on August 20th, and it's September 4th, and we haven't had any additional name storms, so it's been kind of quiet the last three weeks or so. The next two names that would be used on the list would be Francine and Gordon and then Helene, Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, Leslie, Milton and Nadine. But we don't have any system out there with a high chance to become a tropical storm or hurricane at this point. Now here's the latest as far as our forecasts from Colorado State University and from NOAA. Of course, at the beginning of the season and even throughout the first part of the season, forecasts are still thinking this is going to be a crazy busy season. Of course, CSU forecasters calling for 23 name storms, 12 hurricanes out of those six becoming major hurricanes and the NOAA forecast calling for 17 to 24 name storms out of those eight to 13 becoming hurricanes and out of those four to seven becoming major hurricanes. But of course, so far this season, we've had five named storms. Three of those have been hurricanes and only one of those have been major hurricanes. So we're not really on pace to have that many named storms, that many hurricanes and that many major hurricanes. So you may be thinking, what the heck happened? Well, let's talk about it. Why are the tropics so quiet? Why have they been so quiet for the last three weeks or so? Well, there's an explanation. Here's the deal. We've basically had too much easterly wind shear in the eastern Atlantic, and this has been kind of weakening these systems as they try to blossom, blow up, and get going. So we haven't really had that happening. Also, we've had quite a bit of Saharan dust out there that brings in that drier air. That dust was pretty thick throughout August. It was starting to get a little bit less thick for September. However, it is still there and it's still hindering tropical development. So the late season Saharan dust and disturbances coming off Africa tracking a bit more to the north have kind of hindered development. When they track a little bit more to the north, they're running into some cooler air, so it's harder for them to survive and thrive. Finally, warmer temperatures in the upper atmosphere leads to more stable air. So we just don't have a ton of warm air that these systems really need to survive. And we certainly are going to continue to monitor the situation. But overall, we do have the potential for some development over the next couple of weeks. But we are going to likely be a little below the norm for maybe the next few weeks as we check out the latest Colorado State University forecast. Basically, the CSU forecasters saying from September 4th through September 16th, there's a 60% chance of our hurricane season during this period being below normal. There's a 30% chance of it being near normal and a 10% shot of it being above normal. So I think we stay fairly quiet with no really major systems likely developing for the next week or two. Then as we get towards the end of September and into the first few weeks of October, I think the atmospheric conditions will be a little bit more favorable for some of these 
hurricanes, tropical storms developing. But of course, we've already been hit once by Hurricane Barrel this season in Houston, so we don't need any more. It's already been a bad hurricane season for us, but of course, that was just the explanation of why the forecasters were calling for such a busy season and why we haven't really had that in the last three weeks. But still, don't let your guard down because things could ramp up quickly as we go through the next month to month and a half. We are in what is historically the busiest part of hurricane season, and yes, things could get busy. In fact, we are tracking not one, not two, not three, but four potential tropical systems. These are disturbances and they're fairly weak, all four of them, only with a low chance for development. However, they are out there and there is at least the possibility they could turn into a tropical system. All right, let's start off with disturbance number one in the Central Caribbean, bringing some heavy rain to parts of Jamaica, Cuba, Hispaniola. It's forecast to roll over the Yucatan Peninsula over the next few days and likely arrive in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico by this weekend into early next week. Notice the chance for tropical development only around 30%. That's still in the low range. So we're not super concerned it's going to blow up into a big hurricane in the Gulf, but something we're monitoring. All right, system number two in the Central Atlantic, and that one is getting closer to the Lesser Antilles, but look at this, only a 10% chance for that one to develop. Our third system we're monitoring out in the Far East Atlantic, it only has a 20% shot to survive and maybe turn into a tropical storm or hurricane. Still several days to watch that one. And finally, this is the newest disturbance that we're monitoring. This is invest number four. It's a couple hundred miles to the east of the Carolinas, and it is fairly disorganized. It's moving away from the U.S., so the chance of it impacting the U.S. very low, but it is being monitored because it could gain maybe one or two subtropical characteristics over the next day or two, but the chance of that happening, once again, very low at 20%. So yes, we have multiple systems, four in fact, that we're monitoring, but none of them looking like they're going to turn into an impressive tropical storm or hurricane. Let's track the system that will likely end up in the Gulf with our exclusive Futurecast Fox model. Notice by Friday morning, 830, this disturbance starting to roll over the Yucatan Peninsula, then it's pushing into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, likely by Sunday and Monday. I notice around 5 a.m. Monday, it's down close to parts of Mexico near Veracruz, but it is fairly weak, so there's a chance it could briefly become a depression or maybe a tropical storm, but it does not appear that it's going to blow up and become a huge hurricane in the Gulf. And even if it did, there will be a cold front rolling south late this week into the weekend that would likely block it from pushing up towards the Houston area. So I'm not super concerned that system is going to impact Southeast Texas. Now I was telling you about the dust, that Saharan dust that rolls off of the Western African coast. It has been kind of going away some, but notice there's some thicker, more dense dust kind of gearing up here that will be pushing off of that African coast and moving west. So we're still going to have dust out there kind of hindering these systems. So that will be one thing that would maybe keep these tropical systems from turning into monstrous hurricanes. So hopefully the dust hangs around because we don't really want any of those major hurricanes out there. But even though we have the dust, we do still have very warm water temperatures in the Gulf and in the Caribbean in the western and central parts of the Atlantic temps in the 80s. So that certainly would help these systems to continue to strengthen. And so that is something that we are concerned about. However, we don't think there's going to be a ton of action over the next few weeks, but I think by late September, early October, atmospheric conditions will be more favorable for some of these systems to get a lot stronger. Of course, we are into the month of September, still close to the beginning of September. These are some of the areas that we would monitor for that possible tropical development areas where we could potentially have maybe tropical storms or hurricanes develop in the Western Atlantic, our area of greatest concern. You can see that most likely category there, more likely to see these storms form around the Central Atlantic 
and there's still a likely chance for maybe a disturbance to turn into a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. So we're monitoring things closely, but right now nothing that is an imminent threat to Houston or any other part of Southeast Texas. So good news there, but keep checking back because you know things can change quickly with the tropics.